Now let's think about a spot that's very close to the center. So here we have a spot that's very close to the center. So does that mean that its theta will be, be big or small? Yeah, that means that theta is going to be very small. Theta here is almost zero. We have a very small theta. All right, and now we have to go over some small angle approximations. You might have seen this discussed. All right, so theta here is going to be uh, very small. Well, if theta is very small, then theta is approximately the same as the sine of theta. And that's approximately the same as the tangent of theta. So it's good to have these small angle approximations in mind. So this happens whenever the bright, uh, whenever you're looking at spots that are very close to the center. Sometimes you're going to be looking at spots that are very close to the center. Well, then we have all these things that are approximately equal to each other. Okay. Now, um, what, what, what's our label for um, the horizontal leg of this right triangle? What variable do we use for the horizontal leg of that right triangle? L. Yeah, this is our length L. And what's our variable for the vertical leg of this right triangle? Y. All right, and we don't have a label for this, so I'll just call it the hypotenuse. Anyway, how would you calculate the sine of theta? Which two distances would we compare? Wow. Yeah, so the sine of theta would be yeah, opposite over hypotenuse. And how would we calculate the tangent of theta? No, 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 no. Hypotenuse. That's, that's, the, that's the tangent. I messed it up. We both got me confused. <laughs> All right, let's try again. Y over hypotenuse. Is it a sign? Yeah. Did we get that right now? Yeah, opposite <laughs> over hypotenuse. So Katoa. OK, good. And how would we calculate the tangent? But notice, you can already see in my picture, the hypotenuse is almost, is almost only a little bit longer than L. If you look at the picture, the hypotenuse and L are almost the same length because the angle is so small. So we've just proven this. We've just proven that for a small angle, the sine of theta is approximately the same as the tangent. Because the only difference between the sine and the tangent is that the sine puts the hypotenuse on the bottom and the tangent puts L on the bottom. Uh, but those are almost the same thing for a very small angle. After all, suppose theta was zero. If theta was zero, then the hypotenuse would be just laying on top of that. Yeah. And then they'd be the same thing. Okay? The only difference there's the only reason there's any difference between this distance and this distance is because we started putting some theta in between them. But if there's only a little theta, the distance won't be very different. So we just proved the sine of theta is similar to the tangent of theta. You can even see that in a picture. Uh, we won't bother proving this, but we'll accept on faith that this is also equal to these guys. Okay. Uh, all right. It's not too hard to prove, but it's not worth our while. All right, so uh, that would give us that. So uh, how does that help us here? So let's say we have a small angle. For a small angle, what would the sine of theta be? Oh, yeah, that was something we could do. We could put in either theta or this or this. Now, remember, uh, I'm sorry? Oh, it would be close to zero. We don't actually put in, put in the number zero, though, then, because we get zero on both sides here, then. All right, so what's the approximation we can make? Well, actually, for, um, we're actually not going to use this side of the approximation. Right now, we're going to use this. Um, so sine of theta is technically y over the hypotenuse. But remember, we don't know how long the hypotenuse is. We don't know how long the hypotenuse is, but we do know how long L is. At least we, 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 we tend to talk about that, right? We know how long L is over here. If we know L and y, don't we know hypotenuse? Uh, yeah, but um, let's say that we, uh, uh, let's just say we don't have a label for the hypotenuse here. Um, so, uh, or anyway, as an approximation, we don't need to talk separately about the hypotenuse and the L. Um, we can just put them in. So instead of sine theta, I'm just going to put in y over L. So here's a new spot, a, a new formula for the uh, bright spots. Now the bright spots are d times y over L times m lambda. And y over L is just the sine of theta term. All right, so that's just using our small angle approximation. So remember, you, can only, you don't use this for all problems. You only use this when the spots are very close to the center line. So there's some, uh, there'll be a lot of problems where you use this and a lot of problems where you'll use the, the regular formula. Um, but sometimes you do have to use this for a small angle. d y over l equals m lambda.
And the point here is we could use this to figure out what y is. Right? We could use this. So you were saying before, g, if we know y and l, we can find the other leg. But suppose we don't know y and we do know l. Well, then we could use that to figure out y over here. OK. Uh, and then this formula, uh, uh, so that would give us this. Sometimes people solve this equation for y. Um, so that would give us y equals l m lambda over d. These are the same equation. Because usually one of the things we're especially interested in is the position of the spot. So if we solve this for the position of the spot, uh, we would get this. Did I do that right? L over d times m lambda. OK. And you can do the same thing for the dark spots. Again, sine of theta is about the same as the tangent of theta, which is y over L. So that will give us this equation here. OK. And you can solve this for y if you wanted to, again. So this is the dark spot equation. And again, this only works for small angles, small angles only. this, I think, about the dark spots. Let's say we have a pair of slits. variable is equal to 2? D. D. OK, good. Although you might have to do a conversion. How would you convert this into meters? That would be 10 to the negative 6. Yeah, that would be 10 to the negative 6 meters. Micro means 10 to the negative 6. So oftentimes the slits are very close. So you have very small distances. OK, good. So that's a way they could give you D. Now, all this time, uh, we've been assuming that besides the fact that they're traveling different distances, we've been assuming that these two uh, light beams are identical to each other. That is, they both start in phase, they have the same amplitude, and we've been assuming that they have the same wavelength. The name for that is monochromatic, because remember, same wavelength uh, means same color. Monochromatic, that's a term that's used in the, uh, in the homework. The wavelength of the light indicates the color, so there's only one color between them. But now let's suppose that we're, say, shining white light through the slits. Well, white light, is that monochromatic? That's a little misleading. It's, I, I was working with another student that said, well, yeah, they're both the same color, they're white. But remember that white is really just a combination of all the different wavelengths, right? If you, if you look up that table in the book that shows um, all the different colors, they don't have a line for white, right? If you think about Roy G. Biv, well, there's no, there's no W for white in there yeah. um, because white is just the combination of those. So white light is really polychromatic. It's what you get when you put a whole bunch of different um, together. So now let's consider what we have happens if we have white light. Now let's think about the red light uh, and the blue light, because those are the ends of the, uh, or I guess maybe the violet light. Roy G. Biv. So I guess red and violet are the two ends of the spectrum. So is the red the small wavelength or the uh, large wavelength? Large. And then the violet would be the small wavelength. So let's think about the first bright red spot above the center line. The first bright red spot above the center line. And the first bright violet spot above the center line. Will they be in the same place? Will the first red spot above the center line be in the same place as the violet spot? How can we tell that? Let's think about our formula here. We can go back to this. Remember, the bright spot happens when d sine theta equals m lambda. All right. Well, so um, they would. Uh, and what's the? Which of these variables indicates the position 
of the bright spot. Which of these variables, I should have mentioned that before, which of these variables really tells you directly what the position of the bright spot is? Yeah. Theta. Theta really tells you what the position of the bright spot is because it tells you the angle to the bright spot, right? If you know theta, you know the position of the bright spot, pretty much, if you know, uh, say, L. So uh, theta tells us the position of the bright spots. Do these two colors have the same wavelength? No. So will they have the same theta? No. So will their spots be in the same place? No. no. Um, so which, which spot will be further away from the center? Right. So 